Okay, now this morning, we'll talk about how to fill up the spiritual life of people with both the grace and the law. I give you a picture like a house. Like a house. You can think of a house and then the top of the house says the top of the house. Nataka Nataka Sasa uweke nyumba kwenye macho yako. Na sasa lile pala nyumba nyinyi nyumba ile funika inasema hivi. Everything is in God's hand. Kwa hivyo lile pala nyumba linasema kwamba kila kitu kipo mikononi mwa Mungu. God loves all of us. Na Mungu anatupenda sisi sote. And no one can run away from him. Na hakuna awezaye kutoroka katika mikono za Mungu. And then on the right hand side of the house. Na katika mkono wa kulia wa nyumba when we love and obey God, God will bless us. So you can write this down, draw a house. The top, it says that everything is in God's hand. He loves all of us. Aha. He loves all of us. And no one can run away. Na hakuna awezae yani lile paa na nyumba paa ya nyumba sinaka kushikana na hivi sasa hiyo paa ya nyumba inamaanisha kwamba Mungu anatupenda sisi na hatuwezi tukamtoroka and then on the right hand side if we love God and obey God God will bless us na sehemu ule ukuta unaokuwa katika mkono wa kulia unasema kwamba tunapomtii na kumpenda Mungu Mungu atubariki and then the father if we serve God with a sincere heart, God will reward us. If we serve God, the bottom. If we serve God with a sincere heart, God will reward us. Kama basi ile sakafu yake, ile sakafu ya nyumba inasema kwamba kama tutamtumikia Mungu kwa moyo ambayo uko wazi, Mungu naye atatubariki. And then the left side of the house. Na sasa ukuta wa mkono wa kulia wa nyumba, kushoto wa nyumba. If we don't love God and don't obey God, then there is destruction. Kama hatutamtii Mungu na hatutampenda Mungu tutaingia katika uharibifu. And then at the bottom if we don't serve God there is also destruction. Na sisi pia hapo chini unaongeza kwamba kama hautampenda Mungu utaingia katika uharibifu. Now it's a very simple picture. Ni picha tu ambayo umeichora picha rahisi zaidi. No one can run away from God. Hakuna yeyote awezaye kutoroka katika mikono za Mungu. If we love God and obey him and serve him, then God will bless us. Tukimpenda Mungu, tukimtumikia, Mungu atatubariki. And then if we don't love him and don't obey him and don't serve him, there will be destruction. Na tusipompenda, tusipomtumikia basi tutakuwa tutaingia katika uharibifu. And no one can run away. Na hakuna awezaye kukimbia. So this way we can encourage people. Katika njia hii tunaweza kuahimiza watu. God loves you. God sees everything you, you do for him. Mungu anaona chochote kile ambacho unamtendekea. Unasema you obey him, you have all kinds of blessings. Kwa hivyo unapomtii, unazo baraka zote. But if we don't obey him, na kama hatutamtii, the consequences are terrible. Matokeo yatakuwa mabaya zaidi. So do you want to follow God? Je, ungependa kumfuata Mungu? Is this a very simple picture? Now I'm going to give you the Bible verses to support this now. Okay, now we excuse me. They say that you please repeat again to it. I will repeat. I will repeat because this will be repeated here. I will go through each point. Okay. I just give you a picture. Okay. On top of the house, God is everything is in his hand. Yaani kwenye ipaa na nyumba, vitu vyote viko katika mikono ya Mungu. No one can run away. Hakuna awezaye kukimbia. Okay. The Bible passages are Now, you don't have to look up every one, but I will just tell you where it is so you can write down. Psalm 24:1. Katika kitabu cha Zaburi makumi Makumi mawili na nne. Eh eh. The accounting is very different with the accounting. So I'm trying to. Okay. So is it French or is it? 
Kiswahili. I don't know. It's not Kiswahili, and I think it's not French. It's not okay. a language. Makumi mawili na ane kwenye kitabu cha zaburi. Psalm 24:1. Su mstari wa kwanza. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Ya kwamba vitu vyote vilivyomo duniani ni mali ya Mungu. So the earth belongs to the Lord. Kwa hivyo dunia hii yote ni ya Mungu. Our life belongs to the Lord. Maisha yetu ni ya Mungu. And all the possessions become, belong to the Lord. Na vitu vyote tulivyo navyo sio vyetu lakini vya Mungu. So no one can run away from God. Kwa hivyo hakuna anayeweza kukimbia kutoka kwa Mungu. And then in Revelation chapter 2 verse 23 Katika kitabu cha ufunuo sura ya pili mstari wa makumi mawili na tatu Ufunuo sura ya pili mstari wa makumi mawili na tatu I am he who searches hearts and minds and I will repay each of you according to your deed Mimi ndimi ni nae tafuta mioyo za watu na akili zao na nitawapa thawa wote kulingana vile walivyo tenda so God searches all our hearts. Mungu mioyo zetu sisi sote. Now at this point it looks like what you're thinking is just you know it's something private. Hiki, kuona kile ni chako cha but you know the Bible talks about judgment. One day we'll go back to our life again in front of the judgment seat of God. Na sasa baada ya maisha ya hapa kuisha kila mmoja utaenda mbele ya Mungu katika hukumu and God will show our hearts even now. Na Mungu atatuonyesha anatufunulia mioyo zetu waziwazo hata mambo tunayofanya sasa hizi. God will show our heart when we are with our family members. Na Mungu atakuonyesha familia yako yote ijue vile moyo wako upo. Whether we are yelling at them or whether we are loving them. Kama basi unawafanyia vizuri wana familia ama unawafanyia kelele. And God will also show how we treat people. Na mungu pia atawaonyeshe vile mnavyo waelekeza wengine. Are we loving them and caring for them? Kama tujie tunawapenda, jie tunawatunza. Or are we doing things or even serving God with selfish reasons. Ama sisi basi napo wafanyia mambo, tunawafanyia katika mambo katika njia ya uchoyo. Let me tell you, I dare not serve God with a selfish reason. Basi yeye anasema yeye huwa hamtumiki mungu katika hali ya uchoyo. Because I know God sees my heart. Kwa sebabo na yuwa mungu anawona moyo wake. I use an illustration. We all build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And we build on top of it. If what we do is from a heart of love of God, it will build up stronger and stronger. But if we have a selfish reason, God doesn't like what we do. When you build a house, do you build one day, build a wall, and the next day you tear it down? Je, unapojenga nyumba, leo unaanzisha msingi, unaweka ukuta, alafu kesho yake tena unaugomoa? Many people serve God with a selfish reason for money or for their own power. Watu wengine wanamtumikia Mungu katika njia zao za kimichoyo ili kupata pesa ama kupata mali zingine. It's like someone who build a house and then tear it down the next day. Hiyo inafanana na yule mjenzi anapojenga nyumba na jenga leo ukuta tena badala ya kuendelea anaugomoa chini. Therefore, I dare not do anything against God's will. I've heard many pastors do ministry for money. Or to control people. Or to teach teachings that are not from the Bible. Or to draw attention to the miracles and not to Jesus. Does God see all these sins? Does God see all these sins? Does God see all our sins? Yes. But many people just don't think. 
lakini watu wengi hawafikiri hivyo they sin without thinking wao wanatenda dhambi pasipokuwa na kuwaza because they think think of god seeing our hearts kwa sababu hawafikiri kana kwamba mungu anaona nyoyo zao so no one can run away from him kwa hivyo hakuna awezaye kukimbia kutoka kwa mungu therefore everything i do I must follow the will of God. Kwa hivyo chochote kile ninachokifanya lazima nifuate mapenzi ya Mungu. I dare not disobey God in any one small thing. Ya kwamba sitaki nikosee Mungu katika njia yoyote ile hata iwe ndogo. If I owe someone some money, I'll make sure I'll pay back. Basi kama nitakuwa na deni la mtu nitahakisha kwamba lile deni nimelipa. If I don't remember them now exactly, I will pay more than I think you know I owe. Na kama sitaweza kukumbuka ni ananidai pesa ngapi basi nitalipa zaidi ya ile aliyonipa So on top this house is everything is in God's hand no one can run away Basi kwenye pana nyumba ni kwamba kila kitu kiko katika mikono za Mungu na hakuna awezaye kutoroka And then the right side of the house na sehemu ya kulia ya ile nyumba ule ukuta wa kulia Everyone who loves God and obey God will be blessed. Yoyote yule anayempenda na kumtii Mungu atabarikiwa. Matthew 6:33. Kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya 6 na mstari wa 13 na tatu. Mathayo sura ya 6 mstari wa 13 na tatu. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Utafuteni kwanza ufalme wa mbinguni na haki yake na mambo mengine yote yataongezewa. So when we seek God's kingdom we want more people to enter the kingdom of God. Basi tunapotafuta ufalme wa Mungu tunataka watu wengi waingie katika ufalme wa Mungu. And the kingdom of God is also where he rules. Na sasa ufalme wa Mungu uko mahali ambapo yeye Mungu mwenyewe anatawala. So let God rule my life and my family and my ministry. Basi wacha Mungu akaongoze maisha yangu na huduma wangu na familia yangu yote. And seek his righteousness. Na utafute haki yake. That means to obey him. Hiyo inamaanisha kutii then all these things will be added to us na mambo mengine yote ambayo tunayatafuta yataongezewa kwetu so the bible says if we obey god good things will happen to us kwa hivyo maandiko yasema kama tunamtii mungu mambo mazuri yatatendekea okay and then the next point those who serve god will be rewarded wale ambao wanamtendea mungu kazi watapewa thawabu mark 9:41 katika kitabu cha Marko sura ya tisa mstari wa makumi manne na moja kitabu cha Marko sura ya tisa mstari wa makumi manne na moja Anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward Yoyote yule ambaye anaweza kumpa mwenzie kikombe cha maji baridi kwa sababu huyo mtu ni wa nyumba ya Bwana hataweza kupoteza thawabu yake So when we serve God even when we give a cup of cold water uh, to the one that belong to Jesus to a Christian or to bring someone to Jesus he will not lose his reward tunapomfanyia mungu kazi kwa mfano kumpa mwenzie kikombe cha maji tu baridi ya kunywa ina maana kwamba hatapoteza thawabu yake lakini atapokea mshahara kutoka kwa mungu so when we serve God with a sincere heart kwa hivyo tunapomfanyia mungu kazi na moyo ulio wazi for sure God will bless us kwa kweli mungu atatubariki and then in Matthew 25 katika kitabu cha ma- verse 23 katika kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya makumi mawili na tano mstari wa makumi matatu na tatu and then the master said well done good and faithful servants basi yule tajiri atasema kwamba umefanya vyema mfanyi mtendakazi wangu mwaminifu so when we are faithful God will call us good and faithful servants ya kwamba kama sisi ni waaminifu Mungu atatuita watendakazi waaminifu na wema And then we can enter God's kingdom and enjoy God's happiness. Na sasa tunaweza ingia katika ufalme wa Mungu na tunadunda ni Yesu tukiwa katika ufalme wa Mungu. In Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Katika kitabu cha Luka sura ya 6 mstari wa makumi matatu na nane. Kitabu ni cha Luka sura ya 6 mstari wa makumi matatu na nane. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap basi the measure you use it will be measured to you 
peana ili nayo utapewa kipimo ki, kilicho jaa kikasukwa sukwa kikamwagika alafu wewe utapewa zaidi ya kile ambacho ulipeana so we are willing to give to people and help people basi kama tuko na ule moyo wa kuwapa watu na kuwasaidia that God will reward you many times over kwa hivyo Mungu atakupa kulingana na kipimo ulichopeana but we don't bless people because we want to get benefits from God. Lakini sisi tusiwe na ile dhana ya kwamba tunataka tuwabariki watu ili nafu tukapate baraka kutoka kwa Mungu. We bless people because we have the heart of God. We want people to be blessed by God. Tunawabariki watu kwa sababu tunao moyo wa Mungu na tungelipenda kuwabariki watu. When I go to different countries to bless people, anapoenda katika mataifa tofauti kuwabariki watu, I just have the heart to bless people. Yeye huwa anaenda na moyo wa kuwabariki watu. I don't think of what reward I will get. Yeye huwa hafikiri kwamba mshahara wake utakuwa nini. And God likes that most. God likes that most. Na Mungu anapendezwa na hilo zaidi. If we just want to give and have the heart of God to help. Kama basi tuko tuna moyo wa kupeana tunajua kwamba Mungu anatusaidia. And then good things will be added to you. Mambo mazuri yote utaongezewa. Okay, so this is the right hand side when we obey and love God, God will bless us. Katika huu mkono wa kulia ni kwamba unapompenda Mungu na kumtii Mungu na kubariki. When we serve God, God will reward us. Tunapomfanyia Mungu kazi, Mungu anatulipa. And then on the left side, na katika mkono huu wa kushoto, if we don't love God and don't obey God, kama hatumpendi na kumtii Mungu, there will be destruction. Kutakuwa na uharibifu. Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. Wa Galatia sura ya 6 na mstari wa 8. Wa Galatia sura ya 6 na mstari wa 8. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Yule anayepanda kwa kupendeza binafsi yake basi atavuna kile alichokipanda kwenye uharibifu. So when people follow the sinful nature they will reap destruction. Kwa hivyo watu wanapofuata dhana ya kimwili watavuna uharibifu. The spiritual life will be destroyed. Maisha yao ya kiroho yataharibiwa. God will not like the life. Na Mungu hatapendezwa na maisha hayo. The family can be destroyed. Na hata familia yaweza kuharibiwa. The ministry can be destroyed. Na huduma unaweza kuharibiwa. The whole life can be destroyed. Maisha yote yataharibiwa. And if someone continues sin, na mtu akiendelea katika dhambi, the Bible says that that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mtu akiendelea katika dhambi Biblia inasema kwamba hataweza kurithi ufalme wa mbinguni. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 to 23. Katika kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya sita, mstari wa makumi mawili na moja hadi makumi mawili na There is that Jesus said not everyone who says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. Maandiko yanasema kwamba sio wote wasemao Bwana Bwana watakaoingia katika ufalme wa mbinguni. But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Lakini yule peke yake anayefanya mapenzi ya babangu aliye mbinguni. And many will say, you know, I have preached, you know, in, in your name I have I heal people and cast out demons. Ndijapo kwa watasema kwamba tumehubiri kwa jina lako, tumewaponya wagonjwa kwa jina lako, tumefukuza mapepo kwa jina lako. But then Jesus said I do not know you. Lakini Yesu atawaambia kwamba mimi siwafahamu. So when people have a wicked hearts. Kwa hivyo watu wanapokuwa na mioyo ambayo ni mioyo ya uchovu. They just want money. Yaani kazi yao wanahitaji tu hela. They want to control people. Wanataka kuwadhibiti na kuelekeza watu. They want to preach the word of God. Hawataka kuhubiri neno la Mungu. They just preach the miracles and the power. Yaani wao wanahubiri tu miujiza na ishara. They can reap eternal destruction in hell. Kuna uwezekano kwamba watavuna moto wa jehanamu. Is it terrible? Je, hilo sio jambo la kushangaza? Let me tell you. In many churches even though there might be many people sitting there. Aha. Washeni waambie kwenye makanisa mengi japo kuwa kutapatikana kuna watu wengi wanakaa hapo. There might be people go to church for many years they just go to church for good feeling. Kuna watu ambao wanaenda kanisani wameenda kanisani kwa miaka mirefu kwa sababu tu wangelipenda kwenda pale wasikie vizuri. Some people go to church for the friends. Watu wengine wataenda kanisani ili watengeneze urafiki. And these people could some of them because they don't have a relationship with God. Na hawa watu kwa sababu hawana uhusiano kabambe na Mungu, they could lose salvation. Wataweza kupoteza wokovu. 
Because Jesus said there will be many people who cannot enter the kingdom of God. Manake Maluku yasema kunao watu wengi ambao hawawezi wakaingia katika ufalme wa mbinguni. Okay, now the last point of this house is that those who don't serve God can also bring destruction. Basi sehemu ya mwisho ya hii nyumba ni kwamba wale ambao hawampendi na kumtumikia Mungu wataingia katika uharibifu. In Matthew 25 there are three parables about the end of the world. Kwenye kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya 20 sura ya 10 mawili na tano kuna ngano mbili zinazozungumza kuhusu mwisho wa ulimwengu. The first parable is about the the uh, wise and the foolish uh, virgins. The wise and the foolish virgins. Basi, utapata kwamba kuna ngano ya kwanza inayozungumza kuhusu mabinti ambao walikuwa ni werefu na mabinti wengine watano wakawa wajinga. So the wise virgins are the ones who have prepared oil and the foolish ones do not have oil. Kwa hivyo hao wana wali watano wakatengeneza mafuta yao ya taa zao na hao wengine wana wali watano hawakutengeneza mafuta ya taa zao. This oil can be the salvation of Jesus or the presence of God. Kwa hivyo mafuta haya inamaanisha kwamba ni wokovu unaopatikana kwa Kristo Yesu ama ni ni ama ni ni uwepo wa Mungu mwenyewe. When people don't have salvation or the presence of God, they can be shut out from the kingdom of God. Watu wanapokosa kuwa na uwepo na wokovu wa Mungu ina maana kwamba wanaweza kufungiwa nje wasiingie katika ufalme wa mbinguni. And then in the second parable there were three servants. Na sasa kulikuwa ya pili ambaye anasema kulikuwa na watenda kazi watatu. One was given five talents. Mmoja akapewa talanta tano. What another one was given two talents. Na mwingine akapewa talanta mbili. A third one was given one talent. Na watatu wakapewa talanta moja. And the one with the five and two talents they earned more money. Na sasa wale waliopewa tatu na mwingine tano wakaleta fedha nyingi. And the master said you are good and faithful servants. Na basi yule mkubwa wao akawaambia kwamba nyinyi ni watendakazi waaminifu, waaminifu na wapendwa. But then the one with the one talent he buried the talents. Lakini yule aliyepewa talanta moja akaifukia chini ya udongo. And then the master called him the wicked and the lazy servants. Na sasa huyu mkubwa wao akawaambia kwamba huyu ni mtenda kazi ambaye ni mzembe na ambaye ni ni mzembe zaidi. He has to be cast out into the outer darkness and then he will be gnashing his teeth. Ni lazima akatupwe mahali kuna giza kubwa ili akapate kusaka meno sehemu hiyo. Is that heaven? Je, hiyo ni mbinguni? Mahali ambapo unasaga meno ya giza kubwa ni mbinguni. That's not heaven. That is hell. Hiyo sio mbinguni, hiyo ni jehanamu. That means Christians who bury their talents, their abilities, their spiritual gifts and don't use them can face eternal punishment. Inamaanisha Mkristo ambaye alipewa talanta na Mungu na hatumii ile talanta, ina maana kwamba yeye ataingia katika uharibifu ni jehanamu. Now I want to clarify one point very important. Nataka kuweka wazi kipekele kimoja cha muhimu kabisa. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Tumeokolewa kwa njia ya imani kupitia kwa imani. Tumeokolewa kwa neema ya kupitia imani kwa Kristo Yesu. We are not saved by doing good. Sisi hatuokolewi kwa sababu tuatenda matendo mazuri. We are not saved by obeying God and and serving God. Hatuokolewi kwa sababu tumemtii Mungu tunamtumikia. But everyone who has real faith and is born again, yote yule ambaye ako na imani thabiti na ameokolewa, he will love God and obey God and serve God. Huyo mtu atamtii Mungu na kumtumikia Mungu. If a person says he believes in Jesus, mtu akisema kwamba anaamini katika Kristo Yesu, but he doesn't love God, doesn't obey God, doesn't serve God. Lakini hampendi Mungu na hamtii Mungu. There is something wrong with his faith. Huyo mtu ana matatizo ya kiimani and he might not have eternal life. Na kuna uwezekano asiwe na uzima wa milele. So there are Christians in the church in many churches. Kuna wakristo kwenye makanisa mengi. They just go to church and sit and listen. Wanaenda kanisani tu kukaa na kusikiliza they might fall asleep at the sermons na hata wengine wanaanza kulala katika ibada and they might continue to sin and yell at the husband and wife na sasa wataendelea kuishi katika dhambi akiwa ni mume na mke wanaishi pasipokuwa na imani they might be greedy na wengine wanaweza kuwa na tamaa and they don't ever think of blessing other people na hata hawafikiri kuhusu kuwabariki watu wengine and these people might not have eternal life. Hawa watu kuna uwezekano wasiwe na uzima wa milele. Have you seen Christians so called Christians like that? 
umesha wewe kuona wa Kristo ambao wanakaa maisha kama hayo wanakuja tu kanisani ili wakae kwa kiti wa wengine wanaanza kulala they said they are Christian wanasema kwamba wao ni wa Kristo but they continue to sin lakini wanaendelea kuishi katika dhambi and they never serve God na wao hata hawamtendei Mungu kazi and they don't tell people about Jesus na hawazungumzii ama hawaambii watu wengine kuhusu Kristo Yesu and they don't care about people na hata hawajali kuhusu watu wengine according to the bible kulingana na Biblia they have the danger of losing salvation wako na au hatari ya kupoteza wokovu Now say again we are not saved by good works. Nataka hivi hatuokolewi kwa sababu ya matendo yetu mema. But when we have real faith, lakini kama tunayo imani thabiti, then our life will be changed. Maisha yetu yatabadilishwa, tabadilika. Then we will love God and obey God and serve God. Kama tunafutii Mungu tumpende na tumtumikie. So do we need to tell Christians that je tunahitaji kuambia wa Kristo hivyo? That some Christians think they might have eternal life they might not have it. Wa Kristo wengine wanafikiria kwamba wako na uzima wa milele na kumbe hawana kabisa. One day these people who have been in church for years, siku moja ijapo kwa watu hao wamekuwa kanisani kwa kipindi kirefu. And then they go to you know stand in front of God and God said you cannot enter heaven. Na sasa kuna siku inakuja watakaposimama mbele za Mungu na Mungu awaambie kile kilichokuwa ni surprise. Yaani watashangazwa zaidi. So this is a warning we should tell people. Ha basi haya ndio maonyo ambayo inafaa tuambie watu. At the same time I tell people God loves you. Na pia katika eh katika mkutano huu tunaambia watu kwamba Mungu anawapenda. God wants to bless you. Mungu anataka kukubariki. Everything you do for God. Chochote unachokifanya kwa ajili ya Mungu. God will remember. Mungu atakumbuka. And bless your whole life. Na atabariki maisha yako yote. But don't bury your talents. Lakini msifukie chini talanta zenu. And then in the third parable of Matthew 25. Na sasa kwenye ngano ya tatu katika kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya 20 na makumi mawili na matano. There are the sheep and the goats. Kuna kondoo na mbuzi. And then the sheep are the ones who have done good things to the little ones. Na sasa wale kondoo ndio wale ambao wamewafanyia wadogo wao mambo mazuri. And Jesus said you have done it to me. Na Yesu anawaambia kwamba mmenitendea mimi hayo mazuri. And then he said to the goats, you have not done this good things to the little ones. Na sasa anaambia wale mbuzi ya kwamba nyinyi hamjatenda mambo mazuri kwa hawa wadogo. And these people asked, you know, when no, Jesus said you did not do it to me. And then he said, when did we do it to you? Na sasa Yesu anapowaambia kwamba hamkufanya vyema, mbuzi hao watamuuliza, ni lini hatukufanya vyema? And Jesus said if you do not do it to the little ones you do not do it to me. Na Yesu anawaambia kwa sababu hamkuwafanyia wale wadogo ina maana kwamba hamkufanyia mimi. Where do the sheep go in Matthew 25? Basi kondoo wanaenda wapi katika kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya makumi mawili na tano. Where do they go? Kondoo wanaenda wapi? Eternal punishment. Eternal punishment. Sheep or goats? Huh? Sheep or goats? The goats. Yeah, I said the one who don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Kwa hivyo mbuzi walienda wapi kwa sababu hawakufanya vizuri? Left. Yeah, same left, left. Yeah. But then the Bible says the sheep and the goats. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they will go into eternal punishments. Kwa hivyo hawa mbuzi wanaenda katika moto usioisha jehanamu. That means every Christian should serve God. Ina maana kwamba kila mkristo lazima amtumie Mungu. Do you know that in many churches, unajua kwamba katika makanisa mengi, the pastor and some leaders do a lot to serve God. Unaweza tumegundua kwamba wachungaji na viongozi wa kanisa wanafanya kazi nyingi kushinda washirika wa kanisa. But they don't train the members to serve God. Lakini tatizo ni kwamba hawa wachungaji na viongozi nao wamekataa kuwafundisha wale washirika wao pia kumtumikia Mungu. And they also don't lead them to serve God. Na pia hawaongozi washirika wao kumtumikia Mungu. One day this Christian go in front of God. Siku moja hao wa Kristo watakapoenda mbele za Mungu. And God asks them, what have you done for me? Na Mungu awaulize ni nini ambacho mmenifanyia? And they will say my pastor has done a lot for you. Na sasa hao washirika watasema kwamba mchungaji wangu amefanya mambo zaidi kwa ajili yako. But Jesus will say I'm not asking your pastor, I'm not asking you to yeah. do something for me. Na Yesu atamwajibu aseme kwamba siulizi kuhusu mchungaji, nauliza kuhusu wewe binafsi ulifanyia nini Mungu? 
And some Christian would say, I thought, I, I have a good pastor, he has done a lot for God. Then all the members can go to heaven. But Jesus said, it's each person have you served God. Now I say again, we are not saved by doing good. We are saved by the grace of God and faith in Jesus Christ. But when we are born again, then we will love God and obey God and serve God. According to Matthew 25, the one who has buried his talents and spiritual gifts, and do not do good to the little ones, is to bless people. Now it can be any small thing. It can be any small thing that we do to them. It can be any small thing. We can be praying for people. We can tell them about Jesus. We can care about them. We can help them to love Jesus more. Whatever we can do to bless people, God is happy to reward us. But for Christians who just go to church and sit and then go home and do nothing, there is a danger he can lose salvation. So do you want to tell your members that? Do you want to tell your members that? Okay, now I go through this house again. I go through this again. This house. If you have not got it, you can write down again. This house is very important teaching. Very simple. On top of the house, it says, everything is in God's hand. No one can run away. Everyone has to stand in front of God and all the life will show in front of God. And the right hand side of the house, those who love God and obey God will be blessed by God. Those who serve God will be rewarded by God. And then on the left side, those who don't love God and don't obey God will face destruction. And then at the bottom, those who don't serve God can also face destruction. Now I'm not telling you people, telling you to, you know, to always to accuse people or to yell at them, you have to bear fruit. to bear we can tell people God loves you and wants to use your life when you have a good relationship with him you will be blessed but if you just take advantage of God's goodness and you don't love God and don't obey and don't serve Him you can face destruction. So it's very important. Christianity is not just about believing in the head. Some people say, I believe in my head. But 
kichwa changu the bible says faith without works is dead biblia inasema kwamba imani isiyokuwa na matendo imekufa we don't just believe in jesus kwa hivyo hatuamini tu katika kristo when we believe in jesus we'll have good fruits lakini tukiamini katika Kristo Yesu tutakuwa na matunda mema. We we'll love God and obey God and serve God. Tukimpenda Mungu tukimtumikia na, kum, na, na kumtii zaidi. And those people just live in the mind. Kwa hivyo watu hao wanaamini tu katika mawazo yao. And their life is not changed by God. Na maisha yao hayabadilishwi na Mungu. And they don't love God and don't obey and don't serve God. Na hawampendi Mungu, hawamtii na hata hawamtumikii kazi. They can face eternal punishment. Hawa watu wataweza kupata adhabu ya milele. So we tell people God loves you. Kwa hivyo tunaambia watu kwamba Mungu anawapenda. God is a wonderful plan in your life. Mungu anao mpango mwema katika maisha yako. So you want to live in God's love and blessings. Ya kwamba tulipenda kuishi katika baraka za Mungu. And bear fruit. Na tukazae matunda. And the whole life will be blessed by God. Na maisha yako yote yatabarikiwa na Mungu. But you don't love him and don't serve him. Lakini kama hawampendi na pia hawamtumikii, the result is terrible na kuambia matokeo yatakuwa mabaya zaidi. And we can serve God by doing little things. Na tunaweza tukamtendekea, tukamfanyia Mungu kazi kwa kazi vijikazi vidogo vidogo tu. By being kind to people, kwa mfano kuwa watu wenye moyo mzuri kwa watu wengine. Here about the needs, tunajali mahitaji yao, and help them, atuwasaidie, and love them, atuwapende, and tell them about Jesus, na tuwaambie kuhusu Kristo. Is it very hard? Je, hilo ni jambo gumu la kufanya kweli? Hapana. It's not very hard. Sio jambo gumu. It's just whether they're willing or not. Yaani tatizo ni kwamba je tuko tayari kufanya ama tuko tayari ama hatuko tayari. So this one I'll give you a very simple picture of this house to encourage people to love God and obey God and serve God. Kwa hivyo nimekupa tu picha rahisi ya nyumba ambayo inaweza ikakuumiza ikakuimiza kumtumikia Mungu. So there is The love of God and the grace of God and also there is the warning. Kuna kuna upendo wa Mungu, sheria ya Mungu, neema ya Mungu na pia kuna hayo maonyo. So in our teachings we can have the love of God, the grace of God, the help of God and at the same time we have the warning to people. Basi ili katika mafundisho ya Mungu tuko na neema ya Mungu, tuko na upendo wa Mungu na pia tutaweza kuwa na maonyo. But our emphasis will be on the love and the grace of God. Lakini tutasisitiza upande wa neema na upendo wa Mungu. God motivates you to love him and and bless other people. Ya kwamba Mungu anakutochea kumpenda ili nawe uka ukabariki watu wengine you just respond to god yani wewe ni kuitikia tu kwa mungu god is very happy mungu ako na furaha and he bless you na atakubariki now this one is in your test again you have to write this house for me basi leo katika mtihani wako hiyo nyumba ambayo umekufundisha utaichora do you have a question about this house i'm explaining it kama kuna swali kuhusu hiyo nyumba hebu uulize maana linakuja katika mtihani wako wa leo. Kama una swali jamani, kama una liulizo uuliza. Now I say it once again. Nitazibia mara tena. Please remember. Hebu kumbuka. First, the top of the house. Ya kwanza ni lile pale linalofunika nyumba. Everything is in God's hand. Lile pale linamaanisha kwamba kila kitu kiko katika mikono za Mungu. No one can run away. Hakuna awezaye kutoroka katika mikono zake. Let me repeat this house again. Nataka kurudia tena hii sehemu. Anarudia hii nyumba kwa sababu ni ni mtihani wako wa leo. The top of the house. Lile paa linalofunika nyumba. Everything is in God's hand. Kila kitu kipo katika mikono za Mungu. And he loves all of us. Na anatupenda sisi sote. And no one can run away from God. Na hakuna awezaye kutoroka kwenye Mungu. And the right hand side kwa hivyo mkono wa kulia ukuta wa mkono wa kulia he who loves God and obey God will be blessed yule anayempenda Mungu na kumtii Mungu atabarikiwa and then the bottle he who serves God will be rewarded na he who serves God will be rewarded yule anaye chini yake yule anayemtendea Mungu kazi atapewa thawabu and then on the left side na mkono wa kushoto He who does not love God and does not obey God will face destruction. Yule ambaye hampendi Mungu na hamtii Mungu ataingia katika uharibifu. And then the bottom, na chini sehemu yake hiyo chini, 
He who does not serve God will also face destruction. Yule ambaye hamtufiki Mungu pia ataingia katika uharibifu. So it's very simple. Ni nyumba rahisi tu hivyo. Do you want to be blessed by God? Ungelipenda kubarikiwa na Mungu? Ndio. Do you think you can run away from God's eyes? Na je, unafikiria unaweza kukimbia utoke kwenye macho ya Mungu? Can we run away from God's eyes? Tunaweza tu kutoroka katika macho ya Mungu? No one can. Hakuna yeyote awezaye. But I'm very surprised to hear that. Lakini ninashangazwa sana kusikia hivi. Washington has told me that there are some prophets who do it for money. Aha, jana tukiwa katika mazungumzo kule mnapoishi nikamwambia kule kwetu kunao manabii ambao wanafanya unabii kwa kupokea pesa. And then he draw attention of people to miracles not to Jesus. Alafu wao watu wanaelekeza watu wafuate miujiza lakini sio Yesu. And talk very little about the Bible. Na wanazungumza hapo machache sana kuhusu Biblia. And there are many people who just want miracles. Na ndio kuna watu wengi ambao wao wanataka tu miujiza. They don't care about the Bible. Hawajali kuhusu Biblia. And I say are these people saved? Na akauliza je hawa watu kwa kweli wameokoka and also there are pastors who steal people from other churches na hata kuna wachungaji ambao wanaiba washirika kutoka kanisa lingine wakaleta kwenye makanisa yao are they aware this sins can be can have serious consequence je hawa wachungaji wanaofahamu kwamba matendo haya wanayatenda italeta matokeo mabaya so i hope when you hear the word of god you honor god and we love God, honor God and fear God. Kwa hivyo unaposikia neno la Mungu, inafaa umtii Mungu na umpende Mungu kabisa. We dare not disobey God. Tusije tukakataa kumtii Mungu. If we disobey God, the consequence can be very serious. Kama hatutamtii Mungu basi matokeo yatakuwa makubwa zaidi. But when we are sorry for our sins, we ask God to forgive us, he will forgive us. Lakini tunapofanya dhambi na tuombe Mungu msamaha, anatusamehe. But after he forgives us, then we don't continue to sin. Na Mungu akisha kusamehe, usiendelee kufanya dhambi. Okay? Any question? You understand this house? Simple, very simple concept. Je, kama una swali kuhusu hii nyumba jamani tunaomba uulize. Kama kuna mahali haujaelewa kwenye hiyo nyumba uulize. Okay, yes, come forward quickly please. Tunaomba mtengenezee kinasa sauti ya uulize swali. And if you have questions come forward quickly and bring. Na wote ambao mna maswali mgeze tusonge hapa ili tusijaribu muda mwingi. Swali yangu ni ndogo tu sikufuata mwanzo wa somo. Kwa maelezo mimi nasikia kama hii mkondi hii ngambo ya kushoto. Na hapa chini yote malipo ni moja au tatu. Ngambo ya kushoto. Chini ya mkono wa kushoto. Eh, kushoto. Tumesikia Tukas... juu. Tuseme tulipoanza haukuwa ndani. Sikuwa ndani. Sasa kwa maelezo nilikuwa nafuatilia ni ile vizuri. Eh, aha. He was not able to you know, started explaining about the house. So he has not understood the concept about the house. Especially left side of the house needed which part you don't understand which part the left part of the house okay now so i encourage you all to come punctually and then then you listen to the whole teaching but i repeated a few times already i will repeat again ninaomba kwamba katika mafundisho tuje mapema ili tuanze pamoja lakini pia nitarudia tena hilo swali kueleza tena now many of you have copied down the bible verses and i i don't want to repeat everything again sitaki kurudia kila kitu kwa sababu wengine wetu tumeandika chini hata mistari ya kibiblia okay now I'll say again the left hand side is like this nitazungumza kuhusu upande wa mkono wa kushoto those people who don't love God and don't obey God can face destruction. Upande wa kushoto hapo juu kidogo ni watu ambao hawatamtii Mungu na hawampendi Mungu wataingia katika uharibifu. You can see this in many Bible verses in uh, like uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. Na unaweza kuona mambo haya katika mistari ya Kiblia kwa mfano wa Galatia sura ya 6 mstari wa 8. Whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh they will bring destruction. Anayepanda kwa kwa kupendeza binafsi yake atavuna katika uharibifu. And then John 5:14, Yohana sura ya 5 mstari wa 14. 
Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So people who have problem with a relationship with God can face destruction. And John chapter 15 also said, He who is not doesn't dwell in Jesus. Also, Jesus will not dwell in them. Katika Yohana sura ya 14 maandiko yasema kwamba yule ambaye hatadumu katika Kristo Yesu na Kristo Yesu hatadumu katika maisha yake. And they will like a branch cast out the outside and thrown in the fire. Yeye atakuwa kama tawi ambalo lilo katwa likanyauka likanyauka na kutupwa kwenye moto. And he who doesn't serve God also can face destruction. Na yule ambaye hamtumiki Mungu yeyote anaweza pia kupata uharibifu. In Matthew 25 the last two parables about that. The one who buried the talents will be cast out into the outer darkness. And they will gnash the teeth so they don't have eternal life. And the last parable, the ghosts, they do not do it to little ones. They did not do it to Jesus. Na sasa mfano wa mwisho leo utoa kasema kwamba wale mbuzi ambao hawakufanyia vema wale wadogo and they cannot enter eternal life. Na hawawezi kuingia sasa katika ufalme. They go into eternal punishment. Wataenda katika moto uwakao milele. We are not saved by good works. Hatuokolewi kwa sababu ya matendo mema. We are saved by grace and through faith in Jesus Christ. Tunaokolewa kwa njia ya neema kupitia imani kupitia wa Kristo Yesu. But when we have real faith then we want to love God and obey God and serve God. If the person doesn't do it, there is something wrong with his faith. It might not have eternal life. So there are people in the church who don't take the word of God seriously and don't obey God, they can enter hell. Do you understand this part? But we don't keep telling people you can go to hell. We don't keep telling people you can go to hell. Many of you want to tell people God loves you he has all kinds of blessings for you. You follow Jesus, you'll be blessed by him. But if you say and don't obey him, the consequence can be very serious. So do you want to care about your eternal life? Do you want to care about your eternal life? Asante kwa uwezo. Mimi kwa napenda nijue ile foundation sasa ya nyumba ina ina represente ina represente ni John Skia Manjanja. Nikasikia mkono ya Durate na mkono ya ya Shiago. Sasa hiyo chini ya nani na represente nini? Is asking the foundation of the house and, and for example now the floor of the house what does it represent? But the foundation I've said before is that Jesus Christ and his salvation we are building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. But this house is just an illustration. He's asking that every house, every house has got a door. What is the meaning of the door to the house? This is not a complete picture, it's just an illustration. Don't ask me about the window and the door and where is it, you know, it's not important. Okay. And just say the left side and the right side, which side you on? 
Wewe uliza kuhusu mkono wa kulia ama wa kushoto ama para yake. And God is covering all so we can run away. Kwa hivyo ile paa inamaanisha kwamba Mungu ametulinda na kutufunika sisi sote hatuwezi tukatoroka. When you do good, you will run away. God will see your goodness and reward you. Kwa hivyo kwa sababu Mungu wako juu yetu ametufunika, unapotenda matendo mazuri, Mungu anakuona na atakupa thawabu. So whether you do good or not, you still under God. Ijapo kwa unafanya umema ama mabaya Mungu akotuo yako na anakuona 